In this video, I'd like to talk about step functions. And step functions are essentially piecewise functions that are composed of horizontal lines on different intervals. And we call these step functions since you can see, you can almost imagine a line going up and a line going down that if we were to walk along this function, we would be taking a step to either go up or a step to go down. So these functions show up in a variety of ways. And there are two very common step functions that you will often see that are known as floor or ceiling functions. And we will cover those in a later video. But for this video, we just want to get used to how these functions operate and go through some different example problems. So let's just jump right into this problem. And we're given the graph of this step function and we need to match each expression with its value. So take careful note of which endpoints are included. So if the circle is filled in here, that means that negative nine is part of this interval. But if the circle is not included, that means for an X value of zero, it's not a part of this lower line here. It's actually a part of this line here. So when you plug in zero, you get negative three rather than negative seven since this is an empty circle. So with that in mind, let's go through each of these values and determine which Y value goes with each of these X values here. So for F of negative nine, we'll just find that X value and go to the blue curve on the graph and notice it's a filled in circle. So that means that it is going to be this particular y value, which looks to be negative seven. So we'd fill in that there. Now for f of minus 0 0.0001. So that's just to the left of zero here. I didn't draw that perfectly, but it's just to the left of zero. It's in the negatives. And that's gonna be down here at negative seven. Since if it is exactly zero, that would be at negative three. So negative three starts at zero and goes all the way to three, including both of the endpoints. But we're not at zero yet. We're still in this interval of negative numbers from negative nine to zero, not including zero. So that's gonna be, again, down at negative seven. So that one's a tricky one. And in a lot of these problems, the trickier problem types are gonna be the ones where they're on the border. Now, f of zero, like I mentioned, that is going to be at negative three, since that actually includes that endpoint, that particular x value. So when you plug in zero to this function, you get negative three because we have that filled in circle there. So f of zero, that is negative three. And then we have f of 0 0.0001, which is just to the right of zero. But anything from zero all the way to three, that's going to be at this negative three step here. So just to the right of zero, that is also at negative three. And it doesn't change to negative six until we get past three. So something like 3.01, that would be down here at negative six. But if we actually plugged in f of three, that would still be at this negative three here. So with these problems, you really just need to be very careful on the borders of these different steps. So let's move on. Let's look at some different problems here. And we've got another step function. And again, you can imagine drawing in these vertical lines to imagine going down steps as you move to the right here. But this problem is just like the previous one. And for this one, we start at h of minus two. So we find an x value of minus two, and this looks to be a borderline case. So we're choosing between this step here and this one here, but this one has a filled in circle. So at negative two, it looks to be at a y value of negative three. So we can fill that one in there. And let's move to the next one. Now this one is minus 1.999. So it's just to the right of negative two. And remember, negative two is that border. So something just to the right, that's gonna be down here in this step. So now we're at a value of negative seven. If it was 
minus 2.001, so just to the left of negative 2, we would still be up here. But since we're just to the right and negative 2 was our border, now we're down at this negative 7. So we can fill in negative 7 here. In this one, we have h of 0 0.999. So it looks like 1 is our border here. And this top step does not include 1, and this bottom one does. But we're talking about a point just to the left of negative 1. And that would be, again, this step of negative 7 for our y values. So that's going to be like right about that point there. It's hard to draw these exactly since we're so close to that integer value, but slightly less than it. But regardless, this one is at negative 7. And then we actually go to that border point at 1 here. And h of 1, we're looking for the filled in circle. And that's down below on this bottom step. That's at negative 8. So let's do one more of these problems just so that you can feel comfortable. And we're going to again look at these different intervals and match each expression with its value. So let's start with f of minus 3.0001. So it looks like negative 3 is our border here. And we're talking about a point just to the left of that. So an x value right about there. And points that are just to the left of negative 3 are going to be a part of this step. So that step has a y value of 3. Now the next one looks at 3.999. So it looks like 4 is another border here. And we're talking about a point just to the left of 4. So that's going to be up in this step. Anything between negative 3, not including negative 3, all the way to 4, including 4, has a y value of 7. So 3.999 would be on this step here, which, like I said, has a y value of 7. But the next one, it looks like we're going slightly to the right of that border. So now we're at 4.0001. So that's now just to the right of 4, so it's no longer a part of this interval, it's a part of this bottom step. Since this starts at 4, it doesn't include the value of 4, but everything just to the right of 4 is part of this interval. So those all have a y value of negative 3. And lastly, we have f of 9. Now this one's an interesting one, because we only have one marking for 9, and it's an empty circle. So this interval with y value of negative 3 goes from 4, not including 4, and ends at 9, but again, not including 9. So 9 actually doesn't have any point on the graph. If it did, it would have some closed-in circle, and then maybe that would continue in a straight line. But since it doesn't have that, there is no defined y value for 9. There are defined y values very, very close to 9, but not 9 exactly. So this one is actually undefined here.